All right, hi. Why is the background pink? That is the question that I would like to answer in this video. Color. Color is the next thing. You hopefully made, if you watched the last video, you hopefully made some beautiful, interesting, or not it doesn't beautiful, but you made your own drawing. And you're proud of it. I'm proud of you for making it. Now you want to add color. And you, you might have even looked ahead at how to do it and started adding color anyway. But if you didn't, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, before I do that, I, I do want to mention some other kind of logistical things that I've kind of forgotten to mention. So one thing is, whenever I create a sketch with the P5 web editor, I'm going to put a link to that sketch in the video's description. So you can go down to the video description and click on it. And so if you go to the link to the sketch, you're actually going to go to a page that's going to look just like this. It's going to have the same code, and if you hit play, it's going to have the same output. Now you might have different, you might not have the, the dark theme with high contrast turned on, so your, your layout might look a little different, but ultimately the code is going to be the same. But when you, you won't have a save option because you're looking at a project that's made, that I made in my account that I've shared with you. So um, let me, bear with me for a second, I'm, I'm going to be right back. So I'm back. Now this is a, another sketch that I've made for another course and I, I'm going to kind of get to all this stuff and how all this kind of stuff works. But even now, look at all this complicated code, it kind of might make some sense to you, right? Oh, line, you know about that. Ellipse, you know about that. Ooh, what's this X and Y? This is all stuff we're going to get to. But this is a sketch called Oscillation by Nature of Code, which is a different account. So if I, I can edit this code, right, I could say like line, you know, 100. And then, oh, it's doing something slightly different. I'm not sure what exactly. But I can't do, I can't, there's no save option. Where's the save option? You're going to want to go to File, Duplicate. And suddenly you're going to see that it says Oscillation Copy by the Coding Train. And I could rename this and I could say Oscillation Demo for YouTube or something. And I've renamed my sketch. But this is how when you go to a sketch that I've made, you will come to a page that says, you know, color example by coding train, and you will then do file duplicate and start writing your own. The truth of the matter is the stuff I'm doing so simple, you don't necessarily need to duplicate my code to keep doing it, but that's an important piece of as I go through future videos. So I want to mention that at the outset of this video. Okay, I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna worry about that, I'm gonna go away. Now we're back here. Color. How does color work on the computer? You know, I should have thought of this before I started recording this video, but here's, here's what I'm going to, I'm going to say it with three syllables. R, G, B. Remember this. R, G, B. R, G, B. R stands for red. G stands for green. B stands for blue. The way that you create a digital color is by mixing some amount of red, some amount of green, and some amount of blue. So that's, the, that's where I want to start. But we have, that's the concept. How do I apply that concept to function names and arguments of those functions? Well, actually, guess what? We have done that already. In here, there is a function that is talking about color. Background is a function that draws a solid color over the entire background of the canvas. And there is somehow, 220 sprinkles of red, zero sprinkles of green, right? RGB, those are the arguments, and 200 sprinkles of blue. And when you sprinkle that amount of red and that amount of blue, you get this pink. But let's just go with this. What if we take out all of the blue? You can see that's pretty red. What if I take out all of the red? Now it's black. What if I just put some like really big numbers in here, like just guess like a thousand? Look at that, now we've got white, so all the colors all mixed together make white. That's weird, right? Because if you like worked with paint and you were to mix all the color, all like a whole lot of paint together, you get this like brown, muddy color, get darker and darker. This is the way that the color mixing is working here. It's like mixing light. So it's more, the, 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 the analogy here is I have a red flashlight, a green flashlight, and a blue flashlight, and if I shine all those flashlights together in the same spot, they mix together, it's additive color. The more we add up all those colors, the brighter and brighter it gets. But actually, this is kind of wrong, the fact that I'm putting a thousand in here. So the idea here is we're sprinkling a certain amount of red and a certain amount of green and a certain amount of blue. And by the way, there are other ways to set color. So I'll get to that. <laughs> this is not the only way, because some of you are watching are like, what about, I heard something about HSB color, and oh, there's all sorts of other ways to do it, but this is the fundamental basic way. The amount 
that I want that I can sprinkle has a range. None, no red, none more red <laughs> is zero. The maximum amount of red is 255. By the way, how many numbers are there between zero and 255 if you keep the zero? Zero, one, two, three, four. It's 256. So again, we're back to this weird counting from zero thing. So there's 256 possibilities, zero through 255. So now we can go back and we can kind of see, let's come back to this and see, all right, zero, let's go back to zero, zero, zero. Let's do 200, let's do 255. We can see that it's blue. Let's do 100,000. It's the same blue. So P5 is kind of smart enough to know when you call the background function, if you by accident put a number in there that's bigger than 255, just consider a 255. Now, you can customize those ranges for yourself and there's reasons why you might want to do that. Again, I'm going to come back to that. You could look up the function color mode for how to do that. But let's just stay with the default. A red, a green, and a blue. So I'm not the... I'm not really very talented visual design wise, so I'm not going to talk to you about how to pick beautiful colors that work well together. I, hopefully you can find, you, you're gonna have that talent yourself, I bet, or you might find some other resources, but this is how it works, RGB. One thing you might notice is, did you notice how when they were all zero, it was black, and when they were all 255, it was white? What happens if I make them all like 100? It's like this gray color. When R equals G equals B, when the red, green, and blue values are all equal, this is something known as grayscale color. Grayscale color is a color, it's with no, it's a saturation is a term that's desaturated, it's a color, but it's gray. Zero through 255, zero being black, 255 being white. For shorthand, all of the color functions, and there's more of them, allow you to, if you want to do a grayscale function, you can skip having all three and you can just use one. So if you put one argument in the background function, you're assuming a grayscale color. Let's make note of this because there are a lot of different ways. So let's assume that there's some type of color function, right? Background being the one that we know right now. If it has one argument, this is grayscale. If it has three arguments, this is RGB. And you can make a gray color with the RGB being equal, but this is the way that you can call any color function. Now, what other color functions are there? Let's go to the P5 reference. I don't know why I don't have that open anymore. Let's look for color. Oh, look at those. So many things, so many things. Setting, setting. Ah, so we want, there's a lot of stuff about creating and reading color, and I'm definitely going to come back to that stuff. This is really what we care about, setting color. So these are, now you want to write, make your new sketch. Your next assignment is to use any and all of these. Stroke, no stroke, no fill, fill. Uh, maybe color mode, clear, huh? Background. So background we know about. Whoops. Ah. I clicked on it by accident, but that's nice. We're looking at the reference. Um, but we don't, fill and stroke are the next concepts that I want to talk about. So let's say we have, so what are the color functions? <laughs> don't use my fingers. <laughs> so color functions could be background. That's one. Here's another one, fill. Here's another one, stroke. If this is our canvas and the shape we chose to draw is an ellipse with the ellipse function, fill describes the interior of that shape. Stroke describes the outline, the, the outline of that shape. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I come back to the editor and I'm going to get rid of the line and I'm just going to stay with just this rectangle and leave background at 100. What I'm going to do is right before I draw the rectangle, I'm going to say fill and I'm going to say 0, 0, 255. Look, I should show you about the console and errors. I can't believe I haven't shown you about that yet. All right? Look at this. It's blue. The interior of that shape is blue. Now I'm going to say, what's the outline? It's black. So by the way, the default fill in P5 is white and the default stroke outline is black. But I could now say stroke 0, 255, 0 and I'm already driving myself crazy with my inconsistent white space, and we can zoom in and see the outline is now a green color. 
So the interior, the fill is blue, the outline is green. Huh. What if I were to do another shape, like an ellipse, and put that at like 50, 50, uh, 100, 75? Oh look, it's also green on the outside and blue on the inside. Huh. What if I want that ellipse to be a different color? Mm -hmm. uh, what if I put like down here, fill, zero, 255, zero. Huh, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? I'm saying fill green, that ellipse. Well, order, order, remember order. The ellipse, let's move the ellipse over. You see how the ellipse is on top of the rectangle? It's because it's drawn after it, but you need to set the color of what you're about to draw. Notice how fill and stroke are right before the rectangle. Well, that's set to blue, that's set to green. The ellipse is still picking up that fill and stroke. It's going to be, it's like, it's like you're saying, hey, computer thing that's drawing the stuff, pick up this pen. And I told it to pick up this green pen for the interior. I meant to make it red, but I told it after it already drew the ellipse. So let's make this red because that's what I wanted to demonstrate. But if I go and I take this and I put it before it, suddenly it's red. So look at that. So I kind of want to group things. I can add some, the idea here is I can, I can make a stroke that's like 255, so that's just using grayscale color. So you can see like, ah, the interior here is blue, the outline is green, the interior is red, the outline is white. There we go. You probably have a lot of questions. Ask them in the comments. There's a few more things I need to cover in this video. Why, 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 when we looked over here in the reference, is there a no fill and no stroke? And by the way, I encourage you to go and look at these reference pages and read them, because you'll find the things that I'm explaining to you are explained there and probably more clearly, and it also has examples. Why is there no fill and no stroke? Well, you might think to yourself, oh, what if I don't want this circle to have an outline? No outline of that circle, please. I, oh, I'll just put zero in here, right? Zero must be like no outline. But remember, zero is not no outline. Zero is an outline that is black. And this is why instead of stroke, if I say no stroke, then suddenly there's no outline. So no stroke means no outline. And I could say also instead of fill, no fill means no fill. Look at that. So I'm just seeing the background color come through because I'm only drawing the outline of that shape. Now I'm going to go back and put the fill in. Oops. And I realize there's a few other things I want to talk about. Okay. So remember how I said there were lots of ways. Guess what? There's another way. I could have one, two, three, four. I could have four. The fourth argument is, and, and, I, and so RGB is not the whole picture. There is also RGBA, and A stands for something called alpha. Alpha is a word for transparency, meaning is the color see-through? What does that even mean, right? Transparency. So by the way, th the same range, right, 0 to 255 for the A, 255 is the default, meaning that color is just all there. It's another word, by the way, is opacity. So this idea of kind of making the color a little bit transparent so it starts to blend with what's behind it. Now, of course, this is all about just creating the illusion of that. There is no blending of the colors. There's no way you're painting your computer screen. It's just a single pixel with a certain color. But P5 knows that if you want it to appear transparent, it knows what color is behind it, and it can figure out how to make that illusion happen. So for example, if we come over here for this ellipse, right, this ellipse that's red, what if I were to add, if I were to say comma 255 here, nothing has changed. I'm adding that alpha value. If I put zero there, it's gone. <laughs> if it's fully transparent, I can't see it at all. If I make this 100, look at that. You can see how it sort of looks light and it's blending with the background and blending there. So maybe I want to just give it a little bit more, 175, and you can start to see that there. So this is something you can play with, transparency. So just to finish this whole thing off, I can have one argument for anything background fill and stroke is a grayscale color, 0 to 255. 
Three arguments is an RGB color with 100% opacity. It is fully opaque. It is not at all transparent. If I add the fourth argument, I get an RGB color with some amount of transparency. And by the way, if I just do just a little bit of an aside here, if I, if I just use two numbers, then I'm having grayscale with some alpha. So it's a grayscale value with some alpha. So that's important to know as well. So those are all of the options. Now, what is your assignment? If you're watching this and you're gonna make something, take your drawing and give it color. Fill it with color. Set the background, set the, set the fill and stroke of different shapes. I wanna give you just one more, I'm gonna give you one more little treat here. If I add a function called stroke weight, this is a function that's not setting the color, but you know how I'm trying to show you that the outline of this, let me make the outline of this is like red and I've gotta like, oh, I can't even see it. That's weird. Let me make it blue. Oh, do you know why? Because I put this, oh, I have so much more to show you. <laughs> uh, that the outline is blue, but I have to like zoom all the way in to show it to you. What if I add this thing called stroke weight and I just put the number one in there? Well, what that number one means is the outline of the shape is one pixel wide. It's a thin one pixel wide outline. I could make that eight and suddenly it's much thicker. So, and uh, you know, I can zoom in just to show this to you. I could be sort of insane and make this like 24 or 105, you know, and suddenly like the stroke is like wider than the actual shape itself. But the point is just to be able to, if you want to adjust the width of that outline, that's something you can do with these stroke weight function. Okay, thanks. I actually, you know, so what I want to do is show you something about code comments and errors. This is really important. I've kind of been skipping over that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a video really about that separately in the, with, with the P5 Just Web Editor, and that will be coming next, okay? So, uh, it, so that's something that's going to, you, you probably watch that before you do your project or afterwards, whatever, but that's going to help you a little bit, just kind of keeping things organized and managed, okay? So I'll see you soon.